superheroes and supervillains, it's your friend SeanPVS101. Welcome back to another new video on my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing very well recently. With the honor of Despicable Me 4 is releasing very soon on during July of 2024, which I'm going to see that movie real soon. Today's brand new movie review I'm going to review is I am now keep continue, continuing re-review of all the Despicable Me movies leading up to Despicable Me 4, which I'm seeing that movie real soon. And what movie review show I'm going to do a re-review of during my Despicable Month? That movie review I'm going to review is the spinoff. Of the beloved the yellow characters from the Despicable Me franchise, that is none other than the Minions movie. Yep, today's movie review I'm going to review on my YouTube channel is The Minions. This movie was released in nine years ago in the year 2015. Yep, this movie was released on July 10 of the year 2015, the same year as. Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens, the first Ant Man movie, Inside Out. This movie came out in the same year as Age of Ultron and that awful Fantastic Four movie we're never going to speak of and talk about. In this movie, it's directed by Peter Coffin and Kyle Bland. And this movie stars some famous celebrity and cast like Sandra Bullock as Scarlet Overkill. John Hamm as Herb, Steve Carell as young Fanoli as Gru, and also Michael Keaton, Ma Michael Keaton as Mr. Nelson and others. And so the plot for Minions, we focus on the origin stories of the Minions because the story for the movie is the Minions been around the dawn of time since Minions are looking for a new boss from since during the dawn of time because the minions try to find a new boss but then suddenly there's some there's some little shenanigans when the when the bot new boss leader suddenly get killed because of little humor shenanigans and so, so the minions try to find a new boss tried and failed but then the minions went to hiding because of they found their nice home in an icy place, but then like, years later, they feel bored and feeling depressed because they have no master to serve. But there's one minion named Kevin who wants to go find the world's baddest supervillain alive. And then he, he brings Stuart and Bob along the journey because the, the three minions, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob, are now go to the go to find a new boss during the year 1968, during the late 60s, like 1968. While the Minions are in New York City at the year 1968, because the Minions spend the night at this New York City-like mall, but then they watch some TV. They watch a part of the TV of an advertisement ad called Villain Con. It's basically like Villain Con, but it's like Comic Con, but with super villains. But the Minions are excited to see what villains they want to work with, but they choose to work with a female supervillain named Scarlet Overkill, voiced by Sandra Bullock in the movie. The minions are excited to go go to Orlando, Florida, to meet the world's greatest supervillain to work with her, Scarlet Overkill. But then the minions need to get, get to Orlando, but then the nails they 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 picked up by the Nelson families. They drove to Orlando to to, to go to Villain Con. While the minions are excited to see Scarlet Overkill because Scarlet Overkill worked with going to work with the minions and take them to England, and then the, then Scarlet Overkill, voiced by the talented Sandra Bullock, is living living in England because of Sandra Bullock's character. Scarlet Overkill wants to her her plan is she wants to go steal the crown of England because she wants to become the queen of England. While the minions are trying to steal the crown, but then Bob accidentally becomes the king. She becomes furious. The minions has to go fix this and let her to become the queen. And things go horribly wrong. Now, now with the minions trying to save England while Scarlet Overkill wants to rule the world. That's the plot for this movie. So, after I watched the minions movie leading up to Despicable Me 4, I'm going to see in theaters. When to go out the movie right now? Personally, 
this movie's not that bad. Sure, it's not the best one of the Despicable Me movies, but personally, I don't find that Minions movie not that bad. Sure, it's very cheesy and very stupid, but personally, I don't mind that I don't mind that tone being stupid and very over the top. Personally, I was trying to be entertained watching the Minions movie because personally, I find the Minions not that annoying in this movie. Sure, they're still goofy and a little crazy, but it's the Minions. It's what it is, what it is. Personally, while it's not my favorite Despicable Me movie, but personally, I find the Minions movie to be a guilty pleasure of mine because, in my opinion, the Minions movie released in 2015 is a guilty pleasure because why I'm, while I'm calling Minions movie a guilty pleasure because I don't find it's not that bad. I was pretty entertained watching this movie because I don't mind Kevin Stewart and Bob. I do like Kevin Stewart and Bob, especially Bob carried the movie. King Bob! I love Bob so much. Bob is really funny and adorable. So yeah, I personally really enjoyed the Minions movie, while not as strong or well written as the others, while it's not as exciting as much as the second Minions movie with The Rise of Gru, but I still enjoy this film for what it is. So yeah, let's get into the review, shall we? For the story and the writing for this movie, it's not the best written story for a Despicable Me slash spinoff movie slash prequel film because while, while I do like the constant, constant ideas, I really like the constant idea of the minions serving some supervillains, helping out, helping out as the little henchman boss to some supervillains in the since the dawn of time, while the minions tried to keep a boss but failed to kill him off. But the minions tried again and again, but three minions, Kevin Stewart and Bob, go out to looking for a new supervillain during the year 1968 while meeting the girl, world's greatest supervillain slash female character Scarlet Overkill voiced by Sandra Bullock. Personally, I do like the constant idea for a spin-off movie slash The Minions. I do like to see some nice funny and silly shenanigans for the characters, but while The Minions are not that interesting main characters compared to with grew in the Despicable franchise, but the Minions, I do love the Minions as characters, but I prefer them as side characters in the all the other Despicable Me movies if Gru was around. But personally, they're, 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 they're pretty decent main characters. They're not well-written characters as much as Gru, but the Minions tried at least. They tried out a purpose to find a purpose, like a find a supervillain, but I don't mind the writing to be, I don't find the writing to be not that bad. Sure, it's not as, sure the writing can be a bit convoluted and very, a little messy, but personally, it's a Minions movie. It what it is, what it is. But I was pretty, I was turned off my brain to have some dumb humor fun, fun, because it's a Minions movie, it what it is. But I do really enjoy some story elements. I do love the 1960s setting of the movie like the year 1968. I do love the late 60s setting from the New York City era to to the London era. I'll admit it's pretty nice to go, to be there. And also I do love some areas the characters go into like VillainCon was really a lot of fun. I love to go to VillainCon because of Universal opened a new attraction there at Orlando, Florida, which I'm going there real soon one day. So yeah, I do like some of the writing moments, like I do like some some moments, like in my favorite part of the whole movie has to be the climax during while Kevin's turning to giant version of himself while Scarlet Overkill is trying to kill him. But personally, that was that my favorite part of the whole movie is the climax and the also the ending of the movie when young Gru appeared out of nowhere to steal a crown from Scarlet. That scene is awesome. But personally, I do like the writing for the movie. It's really solid and decent. As for my opinion on the animation and the visuals, I gotta say, this has gotta be the best part of the movie is hands down 
the animation and the visuals. I think Illumination Entertainment and Matt Guff's studios did a phenomenal job making this movie for the Minions movie because the best part of this film has to be the animation because the animators and artists at Illumination Paris did a phenomenal job with this movie because of I really love the character designs on the humans that I love the human designs on on the humans in the Minions movies and the other Despicable Me movies. I thought the human characters looked very nice and simplistic in a very creative way. And also I like the designs of the minions. I love the I love the clothing, the models of the people's faces, both expressionists. I love the backgrounds of I love the backgrounds when characters go into like I love some I love the forest. I love the icy place. I love the New York City setting of the 1960s during 1968. I love the areas like London in Buckingham Palace was so beautiful and even even Villain Con and Scarlet's Lair was awesome. Uh, give props to the des character designs and backgrounds by Eric Goulian. He did a good job making this content models come to life. While, while I wasn't crazy on the story, but personally I think the animation is the best part of the movie because Illumination did a creative job making this animation come to life. I do love the animation of the Minions movie. And also for the action sequences, I think the action sequences are very awesome and a lot of fun. I think the chase scenes are very exciting and a lot of fun. Like, I do love the, the bank robbery heist between the Nelson family. I do love the, the, um, Minions are trying to steal the crown, but then they, 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 they're trying to, to try, they're on this carriage with the queen, and then, then, the, then the police are trying to chase it. That was a pretty cool chase, and even, even the minions and Kevin Stewart and Bob are running away from the villains after Scarlet Overgill goes berserk during her coronation. That was a pretty intense, worthy chase scene during the third act, and also my favorite part of the whole movie has to be the climax between Kevin trying to rescue Stuart and Bob from the main antagonist, Scarlet Overkill and Herb, because I'll admit the climax was very a lot of fun and exciting, because I was edge of my seat about while well, giant Kevin is trying to take down the villain Scarlet Overkill, I was pretty my edge of my seat how very intense the climax is, because personally, in my opinion, all Despicable Me third act slash climax feel very exciting and very thrilling. I personally love all the climax in the Despicable Me movies, in my opinion, because this one is very exciting and very a lot of fun to watch. And also, let's talk about the characters. First, we have our three main leads, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob. Personally, well, I do like them as characters but while they're not as strong or compelling as if not around with Gru in my opinion but I don't hate the three minions I personally like Kevin Stewart and Bob because Bob has to be the best one of the three minions because Bob is so adorable and a lot of fun because I love Bob's funny moments when he is trying to be king of England and he's saying I was very laughing. That joke never gets old. It's probably the funniest one of the whole movie because of King Bob. And also, I really love Stuart. I thought Stuart was hilarious because of he was acting like a minion version of Edith, while Bob is acting like the minion version of Agnes. And also, Kevin, for example. Kevin is the most smartest minion of the whole group because he's acting like the minion version of Margo because of fun fact. Do you just know the three minions are exactly similar to the three girls from the Despicable franchise? Kevin's acting like Margot, Stuart acting like Edith, and Agnes and Bob acting like Agnes. Pretty mind blown, eh? So yeah, I do really enjoy the three main characters, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob. I think they're pretty fun 
and a lot. I think they're pretty funny and a lot of fun characters. Well, not as strong or well-written characters as much as Gru from the Despicable Me series. But personally, I do really enjoy Kevin Stewart and Bob as characters in this movie. Well, not as strong written as Gru, in my opinion, but I do like Kevin Stewart and Bob a, a lot as characters. They did not annoy me. And also, we have other characters like the Nelson family, like Mr. Nelson, voiced by none other than Michael Keenan, believe it or not. Personally, I do really enjoy the Nelson family. While they did not have much screen time, we see them throughout the car headed to VillainCon with Kevin Stewart and Bob. Personally, I do enjoy the Nelson family. I think they're pretty likable characters. And also other characters like the Queen Queen Elizabeth in this movie because of because of we see Queen Elizabeth has been throughout the monarchy because of Bob accidentally carried the sword while trying to be King of England and then Scarlet Overkill goes berserk on the minions. Personally, the Queen, the, the Queen Elizabeth was a pretty decent character. I do like her. And also we have um, some villain con characters like Frankie Fishlips, Dumo the Sumo, other super villains. Personally, they're pretty cool. I do like the villain con characters. They're pretty awesome. My favorite one has to be Frankie F Fresh Lips because I'll admit he has he has some funny moments like when he's a we would use some zippers. Oh, just me. Funny. I was pretty chuckling. Funny, not gonna lie. And also, let's talk about the villain of the movie, Scarlet Overkill, voiced by the talented actress Sandra Bullock. Personally, I really, really love Scarlet Overkill, voiced by Sandra Bullock. She's gotta be the best part of the Minions movie because at least Scarlet Overkill was the best part of the movie because of at least Scarlet Overkill was a lot of fun and exciting because of I really love her designs of the character. She reminds me of resemblance to the late 1960s era. I love her, I love her design of her look, of her, of her 1960s look. I love her beautiful red dress i just i just love her design overall because she was resemblance to the 1960s which i really love i do love her designs also i really love her dress becomes a rocket ship throughout the movie when she wearing her normal dress and also real love her royal dress when she becomes the queen of england during the third act i love her royal dress gotta be my favorite one from her design I just really love Scarlet Overkill so much as a character because she carried this movie in my opinion because surprisingly we never see a female antagonist in a Despicable Me movie because we only see some male main villains in the four Despicable Me movies like we only see Vector, El Macho, Balbazar Brat. In this one we see a female villain in a spin-off movie like Minions, we see Scarlet Overkill. Personally, I really like, really love Scarlet Overkill. I thought she was so much fun and, and very entertaining. I love her beautiful design, both her normal dress and her royal dress. Also, I love her performances by the talented actress Sandra Bullock because Sandra Bullock voice acting did a phenomenal job. I love her voice acting in my opinion because Sandra Bullock did a phenomenal job voicing this iconic character. And also, I actually do like her motivation. While it's not a perfect plan, but personally, I do see her motivation where she's coming from because of she is a major fan of the country London. She loves she loves the queen Elizabeth of England. I, I I do really like her motivation when she trying to steal the crown from the Queen of England, and then she be, she wants to rule this country of England to become the Queen of London, while the minions are trying to help her out to steal the crown. But then she they tried and failed. Personally, I do like her motivation while she trying to rule 
England and take over this country and rule the world. Personally, not a perfect motivation for a main villain, but personally, I don't mind that motivation. I do really like it because, well, just someone is trying, someone's a major fan of England, but wants to take a, take over the world, trying to be king or queen. Personally, I do like that motivation. Also, I love moments of Scarlet Overkill when she fight her royal dress, and some moments when she goes absolutely psycho, acting like a complete psychopath, like acting like a psycho version of Queen, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. <clears throat> I like Scarlet. I like to see Scarlet Overkill in her psycho mode during, especially in the coronation scene, when she goes absolutely berserk during the third act, when, 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 when Kevin accidentally almost killed her in a chandelier at a coronation, and then she goes absolutely nuts. Personally, I really love Scarlet Overkill as a character because she's probably my favorite Despicable Me villain along with Vector and Balbazar Brandt because I really love Scarlet Overkill as a villain. I also love her royal castle, like, home, because her home looks like a castle. Personally, I really love Scarlet Overkill. She is a very awesome and a very attractive character because I love Scarlet Overkill, in my opinion. And also, I really love Scarlet Overkill's husband, Herb voiced by John Hamm, because personally, I really love Scarlet Overkill's husband, John Hamm, because I thought John Hamm as, I, I think John Hamm's character, Herb, was so much fun and very funny, because at least John Hamm's character, Herb, who is this character who has, who is, a, who is an inventor slash engineer to working with his wife, Scarlet Overkill. Personally, I love Herb a lot. I thought Herb at least has some funny humor and funny moments of the movie because at least Herb has some funny moments more than the Minions does because I thought Herb was so much fun and very likable because at least he wasn't evil and hateful as as his wife Scarlet Overkill but I do really like Herb as a character. I thought he's pretty much a likable main villain in my opinion. I thought he wasn't very threatening as his wife Scarlet, but I thought at least Herb has some likability to his character. I love Herb as an inventor who give the minion he give his gadgets and gadgets and weapons to the to the yellow minions. But I thought Herb was a fun character in my opinion because he got some very charm and likability to it. And also, I really love Herb and Scarlet Overkill's chemistry. I thought the chemistry was really, very funny and a lot of fun. Well, not the best chemistry in this Big Me movie, but I do love them as couples, as supervillain couples. I think they, I think they're pretty entertaining to watch as evil villain couples. Also, let's talk about the humor. Say a little about this movie's humor, but personally, I don't find the humor not that bad. Sure, it's not as funny as some of the other Despicable Me's humor. Well, not as majorly funny as the first movie humor or second film's humor. But personally, I, I enjoy the Minions movie's humor. Not the best humor, but personally, I find the humor in this one a guilty pleasure because I was pretty ch I was pretty chuckling at some humor, some parts of the humor. Like, for example, like the three Minions the three minions humor was pretty funny. I do like some moments when the on, at the minion shenanigans. Also, I really like Bob as the king of England. That was pretty funny. And also, um, also my favorite part, my funny favorite part of the movie, my funniest favorite funny part of the movie has to be the scene when Scarlet Overkill is ready to get dressed for her coronation at the Queen of England. I also, I really love Herb is trying to tied her dress in the back of the dress. And when Scarlet says, come on Herb, I know I can do it. And Herb is trying to try her best to tie her dress up. And then she, she wanted to make her dress tight. And then Herb is trying her best. And then the butler character came by in the room and he was serving tea for them. They knew <laughs> the butler saw Herb and Scarlet are trying to make at each other. They walk away, he walk away. <laughs> that joke never gets old because 
That was a pretty hit, good hit adult, adult joke in a children's film. Not gonna lie. So yeah, while, while the humor in the Minions movie is not the best one of the franchise, but personally, I enjoy the humor in the Minions movie for what it is, what it is, because it's a Minions movie, what do you expect? But personally, I don't mind it. It's Minions. It's the Yellow Minions. It what it is, what it is. But yeah, I really enjoy the Minions movie. While it's not the best Despicable Me movie, it's not as compelling as the others, like the first, second, or third movie, or not as even more exciting as its follow-up Minions The Rise of the Group. But personally, I do really enjoy the Minions movie. It, I thought this movie was a guilty pleasure good time. And also, let's talk about some some fair parts of the movie. My favorite part of the movie has to be some my favorite part of the film is is the King Bob scene when King Bob is ready to become the king of England and then Bob is trying to make a, a speech to the audience while playing the graduation theme and then he says King Bob and the crowd cheers and also I love some funny parts of the movie like with the minions are trying to join himself to join itself in England and then there are some other funny Minions shenanigans I know people in our fan of, but personally, I don't mind it. Also, my actual favorite part of the movie has to be the ending part, when Scarlet Overkill and Herb are ready to steal the crown after they ex survive from the nuclear explosion, and then Scarlet Overkill and Herb got freeze ray by a younger version of Gru. Yep. A young Gru came out of nowhere to steal the crown, trying to get away and fly his motorcycle plane and go home in the U.S. Personally, I really love that part so much because at least I, it's nice to see a young Gru appeared out of nowhere to steal the crown from the villain Scarlet. And then the minions get excited to follow young Gru's flying motorcycle plane at the end. Personally, that scene is the best part of the movie because of I love Younger Gru of this movie because of I thought Young Gru was the best part of the movie because it leads to a follow up called Minions the Rise of Gru which that movie was an upgraded version than this. Oh, is this film's perfect? No. Is this film's un is this one the best one the franchise? Also no. It's still not as good as the actual Despicable Me series. It's not as exciting as his follow-up Minions to Rise of Gru, but personally, it has some some as cons and flaws of the movie. So let's talk about some, some of the flaws, shall we? My only biggest problem of the first Minions movie is has to be the plot conveniences. Personally, my only biggest problem of the movie is its plot conveniences because there is way too many plots going on in one movie. Like, we only see the minions are serving some supervillains in Sense of Dawn of Time. We focus on some three minions. Kevin, Stewart, and Bob are going out to see a supervillain, but then they're, they're, in, they're in New York City, going to a mall, and then they're out of nowhere. They go to Villain Con. They picked up, they, 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 get, they get a ride on some bunch of random supervillain family and then later on you met they go to villain con to find a supervillain and later on the later on the story they the minions focus on going to england and steal a crown from the villain and then things go happen personally my biggest criticism is the convoluted pl plot plot points in this movie because it goes completely a little out of nowhere it's not bad but my only biggest problem is the plot points, the plot conveniences, just came out of nowhere for no reason. But, I don't mind it. It's a Minions movie. It's what it is, what it is. But, the plot conveniences are my only biggest problem is. Some of the plot conveniences points just came out of nowhere for no reason. But, it's a Minions movie. It's what it is, what it is. Also, another biggest flaw of the first Minions movie is... The minions as main characters isn't that strong, but don't get me wrong, I still love the yellow minions characters. I think they're funny and hilarious, but they're not as strong or compelling to handling their own movie 
if if not around with Gru, in my opinion. But I still like the minions only as side characters because they're only funny as side characters than main characters. But I don't really hate it. I'll admit there's some things at least the minions have purpose. Like Kevin Stewart and Bob at least have some purpose. Like when they trying to try they try to apologize to the main villain Scarlet Overkill after 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 the three minions kind of screwed up the plan. Well, at least the minions have some purpose. But as for their main characters, they're not as strong written characters compared to with Gru in the other Despicable Me movies. But personally, but personally, they're not awful, but they're not as strong written characters if Gru wasn't around. But personally, it's minions. It's what it is, what it is. But I'm not that angry or offended. But I was pretty entertained for the most part. Overall, guys, while it has some couple of flaws, but personally, I don't find the first Minions movie not that bad. Sure, it's not as strong as the other Despicable, Despicable Me movies, or not as strong as its follow-up Minions Rise group. But personally, I really, really enjoyed it. I find this movie a guilty pleasure good time with decent storytelling, likable characters, very phenomenal animation, and very creative humor and exciting action sequences. And also, especially, a, a great soundtrack. Personally, my opinion on the soundtrack, I really love the soundtrack, by the way. I love the, I love the motion picture score of the movie. I also love the needle drops and song playlists from the 60s era in this. I do love the soundtrack overall, in my opinion. It is another best part of the first Minions movie, is the soundtrack. Overall, I give this movie a solid 7 out of 10. While it's not the best one in the franchise, but personally, I find this one a guilty pleasure good time. Well, that's it for my movie review on the Minions movie. I hope you really enjoyed this read review. Give me a like and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. Comment down below what's your favorite character and what's your favorite part of the movie. My opinion is has to be Scarlet Overkill and Herb and also the ending of the movie when Young Gru appears out of nowhere. You know how I feel about that character, which I love a young version of Gru, by the way. So yeah, subscribe subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video and get totally free, free.